As a designer, I have traveled the globe investigating amazing feats of architecture. And right now, I'm going to take you inside a building that is going to transform India. Mumbai, the densest city on the planet, is remaking the most delayed airport in the world. The, the space challenges are are, are enormous. Yeah. A radical two billion dollar airport to handle over 36,000 more flights a year. 12,000 workers are erecting a massive new terminal with one of the largest roofs ever built, held up by one of the most complex steel structures ever conceived. God, look at that thing on top of that thing. That is amazing. All right next to an active runway. That's the airfield. That's literally where the planes land without canceling a single flight. I'm going out there and I'm doing it. Are you kidding me? So I just traveled 13 hours by plane to get here, and now I'm in Mumbai. With over 20 million people living here, it is the densest city on planet Earth. Located on the western coast of India, the city of Mumbai lies on an island just three quarters the size of New York City, with more residents than the entire state of New York. It's the financial capital of the country on the rise, generating nearly half of India's foreign trade. In about three years' time, India is going to surpass China to become the fastest growing economy in the world. But despite this incredible economic opportunity, India's infrastructure is crumbling. Only 40% of homes have running water. The majority of roads remain unpaved, and Asia's oldest railway carries three times its capacity. There's the reality that economically the city is growing very rapidly, but that the infrastructure challenges are very serious. Mumbai has grown very rapidly and has a potential to become a world-class city. I think, you know, any place you can rejuvenate it and you need a catalyst for change. An important catalyst for Mumbai's $195 billion resurgence is also in the worst shape. Chhatrapati Shivaji International Airport. Of their 650 daily flights, only half of them arrive on time, meaning that the city's only airport is in desperate need of an upgrade. So in order to sustain the city's growth and keep people coming back to Mumbai, they're embarking on one of the most complicated infrastructure projects in India's history. They're building a brand new airport. Designed by SOM Architects, a revolutionary 4 million square foot terminal, topped by one of the largest roofs in the world, designed to handle a hundred more flights a day, nearly doubling the airport's capacity to 45 million travelers each year. All built on the same spot as the country's second busiest airport. No one's ever built an airport in this tight of space. Absolutely. And so in four years' time, the passenger capacity of this airport doubled. Doubled, exactly. And while we were building the new airport. So based upon the growth of the existing Mumbai airport, you couldn't stop it while you built the new terminal. We could not stop it. It's like doing an open heart surgery on a marathon runner while he's in the middle of a marathon. Unable to knock down the existing airport until the new one is ready, architects only had room to design a single terminal, one of the largest in the world, that maximizes space with a roof unlike any before it. The design of all major airports, whether it's JFK or O'Hare or Shanghai, share one common element. They all have an enormous roof under which you check in, go through security, and go to your gate. Now, how you hold that roof up, whether it be through columns or huge arches, is what makes one airport different from another. Now, here in Mumbai, their roof is 17 acres in size, which means their columns are no ordinary columns. And today, we're going to build something called a mega column. This terminal roof is covered by a skin-like thermoplastic membrane spanning more than 10 city blocks. 
to hold up all 15,000 tons of it without compromising the space below. Engineers created 135 foot tall mega columns. So steel on the inside, and then we wrap that steel in a shell of concrete. Right. This 30 number of column itself is take one uh, from foundation to the top of this one. It is taking at least uh, three and a half months to complete one job. Three and a half months mm -hmm. to do one column. One column. I got to tell you, I've seen a lot of columns in my day. I have never seen a column like that. Architects wanted to limit the number of mega columns to create openness inside the terminal. Typically, a roof this large would require 60 mega columns, one every 100 feet. Instead, they added flared steel caps called pods to top each of the mega columns. Spanning 105 feet out from the center, in either direction, the pods transfer loads laterally and then down each mega column, allowing engineers to remove 30 mega columns and create a more open space for passengers. So this incredible shape, this amazing umbrella shape, is not just because it looks cool. Correct. You're also able to give the people traveling a cathedral-like interior space. Right. It is a state-of-art design, and uh, at the same time, it is a beautiful structure. These are incredible columns. Yeah. The whole project quite literally rests on these columns. And uh, Mumbai is resting on that, too. With only 30 mega columns, they have to build each one strong enough to support 2,000 tons. Starting with a nearly eight foot thick steel spine, it's reinforced with 10 tons of rebar. Crews then install the formwork, attaching two C-shaped steel sections to create a seven foot tall circular mold for the concrete. Okay, so Uni, these right here, this is the actual formwork that we're putting onto the column. Got it. And this is just half of the former. This is half. Uni, these are very large columns. It is a very, very large column. You and I could get an apartment in New York City together, and this would be our living room. And that would be a good apartment, Uni. <laughs> We'd be happy about it. Here we go. I got it. Because each pour requires 40 tons of concrete, this piece of formwork is made from six inch thick steel weighing 30 tons. It's heavier than I thought, huh? The tower crane lifts it 115 feet over the job site and oh, into position. Now, this piece of formwork in the sky is not just going alongside the column, but rather over top it, sliding all the way down in position, just about, just about right there. With the first half of the mold in place, Crews then lower the second half and connect the two together. The second piece is the most important. If you don't place it properly and if you don't bolt it properly, the alignment will get totally mismatched and it will be a mess of job. So if the alignment of the formwork is not correct, the subsequent concrete pour is misaligned yes. and the performance of the column is degraded. Correct. Okay, let's get up there, baby. Here we go. To guide this piece of formwork into place, 17 iron workers spread out on aluminum scaffolding 90 feet off the ground. <laughs> pulling it in with just two tag lines. Push karo, push karo. All right, I got it. I'm loving that. Push karo, push karo. Right. Ah, very good, come on. Yeah, give it a push. Oh, oh the wind is trying to force this thing out. Hi, very good, come on, come on. Uh, come on. Yeah, perfect. We thread it between the scaffolding and steel, a narrow 12-inch gap. Okay, here she comes. So as you bring it down, the idea is to keep it essentially where you want it, about three inches off the rebar. And it crosses. You can hear it when tying off, retying, tying off, retying. Essentially trying to move alongside this thing as we drop it. Whoa! But not the most amount of foot room. All right, come down more. With just two inch wide scaffolding for footing, they have to line it up within a tenth of an inch, all in the sweltering 95 degree heat. You're working in India, in Mumbai, it's extraordinarily hot and humid, so while you're running and pushing and pulling, I mean, it's brutal. It's unbelievably brutal. Slowly, slowly. With no room to swing the crane, it takes all 34 hands to align the steel formwork. At this point, it's really about dudes with their arms, their legs, and their feet just physically holding it in place and lining it up. Myself included. Arya, Arya. Okay. Arya. What does Arya mean, by the way? Arya. Bring down, bring down. Arya is down, all right. Arya. It's coming in, it's coming in. Yeah, very good, coming in. Coming in. Wow. There it is. Wow. There it is. 
Very nice. Look at this alignment right here. Two holes practically lined up. The bolt's going to pop right into place and bring these two pieces together. Give me a bolt. 70 bolts lock the former together, making this seven foot section the second of 19 that will come together to create a single mega column. Now, lest you forget you're on a job site in Mumbai and one of the most amazing projects ever built, when they do something incredible, what do they do to celebrate? Have a cup of tea. Unbelievable. We're seriously having tea right now? Cheers, my friend. Yes. Thank you, Danny. Amazing. I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of hot. I could have gone for like a Gatorade or something. <laughs> Coming up. Building one of the world's largest temporary structures. If you look at these bolts, it's like a 10 pound dumbbell. You do not want to drop the bolt. 200 feet above the job site. Oh, oh, Sidium, drop the bolt. India is the birthplace of Hinduism, the world's oldest religion. And with over 330 million deities and growing, countless shrines line Mumbai, honoring both immortals and mortals like Chhatrapati Shivaji, whom the city's new airport is named after. Chhatrapati Shivaji was a 17th century ruler over this portion of Western India. Now, he was so revered by his people that he was elevated to the status of a god. Now, what do you do if a statue of that deity just happens to be located right smack in the middle of your construction site. Well, you build around it. On most construction sites, builders would use up to 10 tower cranes to lift and complete this 17-acre roof in just eight months. Here, keeping the shrine open to worshipers means keeping cranes out of this 6,000-square-foot area right in the center of the entire project. With cranes restricted to the perimeter, engineers designed an amazing solution. A quarter mile elevated track called a highway truss, composed of over 4,000 individual steel segments. This unprecedented rail system allows crews to move structural caps called pods atop all 30 mega columns without blocking access to the shrine below. Once the roof is finished, this entire 1,270-ton structure will be taken apart, making it one of the largest temporary structures ever built. And right now, they're installing piece number 1,000. So you actually invented this system. You designed it specifically because the site is so constrained with housing over there, the airport over there, with Chhatrapati statue over there. You just have no room to work. Absolutely right. And to work with this kind of constraints, it is very challenging assignment for all of us. You cannot take a crane inside. You cannot take any lifting machines. Everything is depending upon this highway truss. Let's do it. You ready? Yeah, we are ready. OK, I'm ready. Uni obviously is born ready. Look at the face. OK. Is there ever an image of preparedness more so than Uni? All right. Going up? There she goes, nice and easy. Now, what's so incredible is that this huge piece of steel above my head right now looks like it's for a bridge or a skyscraper, but that whole thing is just temporary. This piece will eventually support the 275-ton steel pod. All right, let's go. But at the moment, it's the lack of steel 200 feet up that's making this one of the most dangerous jobs on site. OK. All right, so just to put it in perspective, uh, behind me is the airport, right? We're actually over top the airport. And what I'm walking on right now is the actual highway truss. Oh, you got to be kidding me with this, fellas. Uni! Sorry, extremely sorry. <laughs> exactly. I understand your uh, difficulties. Fellas! Yeah! That is a rough spot. Someone drew the short straw, huh? OK. Uni, I'm ready. Your two very, very unfortunate gentlemen are ready. Everybody is ready. Let's install some steel. OK, want to bring it in? Let's do it. Let's get out to this edge. My friend, I'm going to get out here with you. Wishing I wasn't. Whoa! This has got a lot of bounce to it. It's got a little, uh, oof, oof, oof. <laughs> Yeah, no? You, you can't be loving that. Look at this guy. He's like a badass on the steel here, huh? He is walking out on a plank to nowhere to get that tie rope off there. That is a seriously rugged job right there. Here she comes. 
Each segment is locked to the preceding piece of highway truss. Okay. With 20 bolts, each weighing 10 pounds. If you look at the size of these bolts, they're really enormous. I mean, it's like a 10 pound dumbbell. You do not want to drop the bolt. Oh, oh, Okay. Hey, Aram Sev. Sidium, drop the bolt. Danny, you can see the top. It is perfectly aligned. It is bringing down now. Yep, it's coming down right here. And you can see, like any piece of iron working, after the big hoist, the crane does its work, then the job falls to these guys right here to literally align bolt holes within millimeters. That's it. Come closer. Now, it's important that I point out right now, as we're doing it, what that steel is hitting, that orange piece of steel, is the temporary structure on which we're standing. So every time he bumps that, this entire scaffolding shakes. Let's feel the whole truss move. It's like a diving board. Using a chain block that acts like a winch, workers pivot the three and a half ton piece into place. Okay, stop, stop. All right, we got it, we got one in. We got one in, nice. Each segment takes three hours to install, extending the highway truss just 15 feet, meaning that it'll take crews three more months to finish. Look at this gap, almost seamless. So with this new piece of steel now installed, you can really understand why it is they call this a highway truss. Because it's on this elevated steel system that the pods will travel over the building and cap off the 30 mega columns. Coming up, an airport built with an entirely glass facade. Keep her tight, keep her tight. Right next door to an active runway. Oh, 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 oh. Mumbai's aging airport was built 70 years ago. Once isolated 23 miles from downtown, today it's an island in a sea of people. Surrounded by nearly half a million residents living in one of the city's largest slums called Azad Nagar. This is really one of the more staggering aspects of this project. I'm driving into a neighborhood and that wall right there on the other side of that barbed wire, that's the airfield. That's literally where the planes land. Currently handling a fifth of all of India's air traffic, architects of the new airport had to double the capacity. Now, they would ideally add a second terminal to accommodate the 36,000 more flights each year, but not an option with a population the size of Miami living around the airport. The space constraints surrounding the construction of this terminal are unlike really any other airport in the world. Forget about anywhere in the world. In Delhi, they have about 5,000 acres. In Hyderabad, they have 5,500. Bangalore, they have 4,000. Of course, if you compare uh, similar size airports in other parts of Asia, Kuala Lumpur has 30,000 acres. Same number of passengers in Kuala Lumpur, and they have 30,000 acres. 30,000 acres. And you have? 1,200. 1,200. <laughs> Instead of building a second terminal, architects created one innovative structure that maximizes every inch of space. If you want to increase the traffic in your airport, you have to add more planes. But if you want to add more planes, you need to have more gates. And in airport design, the number of gates you can have is directly related to the amount of surface area. Most airport terminals are long, narrow boxes that stretch for over a mile. Limited by just 2,100 feet of horizontal space, Mumbai's new terminal would only have 31 gates. So architects pinch the terminal on three sides, creating an extra 700 feet of surface area for more gates. This allows them to handle an additional 100 planes each day. Because architects wanted people to see those same planes, they designed an all-glass terminal that requires workers to build a 1 million square foot glass facade, one of the largest ever built right next to an active runway. There's something really romantic about the fact yes. that you're flying to a new exotic location, you're taking these enormous planes, and you actually do want to look at them. You go to any corner of the building and you can view it outside. It is only glass. Everyone enjoys looking the plane take off and landing. It's exciting. I, I find something amazing in it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is something amazing about it, but at the same time, the turbines of yeah. a jet engine, yeah. They roar. So there's a kind of a complicated issue with a glass airport in that you want to see the planes, but you don't want to hear the planes. Outside, engine noise can reach upwards of 140 decibels. Louder than a rock concert. 
So to minimize sound inside, architects added a second layer of glass to each panel, creating a half inch gap between the panes. This reduces noise to 40 decibels, just louder than a whisper. You get the full visual of the planes landing and taking off. But not the sound. It will minimize a hell of a lot of the sound. The, the nice thing when you bring your family to go on holiday, the kids like to look at the jets landing and taking off without having to bash their ears because of the noise. With monsoon season approaching in just four months, dropping an inch of rain per day, five glazing teams called gangs are working simultaneously, hanging 125 panels each day. Boys, come on in here. This is my new gang. We like to call ourselves the face masks. This is our turf, our neighborhood, and we're gonna hang 25 panels of glass today, right? Why is everyone wearing a face mask? Is there like a particulate that I should be mindful of or a, uh, an airborne bacterial issue regarding the glass? No, it probably is. I know what it is. It's not actually has anything to do with bacteria. It's about us just being an outlaw gang of marauders hiding our identity from all the hijinks that we do. Planes land just 2,000 feet from this part of the terminal, meaning the job site is just covered in debris. And also, there's no room for a tall tower crane. Here we go. Instead, they lift each 1,000-pound panel with a specialized 11-foot-wide mobile crane. Keep her tight, keep her tight. No bigger than a Mack truck. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 20 feet up, crews tie off to steel scaffolding and lean out over the edge of the building to await the glass panel. And here is the glass panel right here. Here we are. So now, coming out to the edge of the building here, tying off. And here she comes, here comes the panel, about 12 feet tall. Let's get hands on it, boys. Get some hands. This panel's outfitted with three interlocking brackets that snap into the edge of the adjacent piece. Knock it out, here we go, bring it in. An innovative design that allows the crew to install each panel in less than 30 minutes. It took the gang just a matter of moments to hang a single glass panel. But keep in mind, in order to wrap the facade of every inch of this curving terminal, these guys will end up hanging over one million square feet of glass. Coming up, Installing a steel section larger than a city bus. Oh, I'm going out there and I'm doing it. On a steel beam only eight inches thick. When this thing comes down, if it slides forward, it is gonna crush me, so I gotta be able to move quickly. But first, what is the largest airport in the world? The answer after the break. Here's your trivia answer. Saudi Arabia's King Fahd International Airport at over 300 square miles. It's nearly 10 times bigger than Manhattan. <laughs> India's economy has tripled in just 10 years, giving many people their first opportunity to fly. With the highest percentage of first time flyers in the world leaving Mumbai's crowded airport, every departure is an event. When you land, in a given city and you leave the airport, it's a very common custom that you might have friends or family meet you there. Now here in India, when you're getting ready to leave the city, because it's such a big event, your mom, your brother, your cousins all come to the departure gate to see you off. So for every one Indian traveler, you end up with an entire family event. Is, is this his first time leaving Mumbai? First time. First time. And so, so we have a brother-in-law, wife, Sister, daughter, uncle, cousin, niece, nephew, sister-in-law, son, brother, friend, some dude who's just hanging out. The whole family's come. Literally over 15 people have come to say goodbye to this guy. Nearly 40,000 people gather in front of this airport every day. And with only a narrow 12-foot curbside to stand. So Mumbai's new airport is attempting to accommodate both passengers and their families. So the design of the architecture takes into account this very unique cultural condition and makes it part of the building. Absolutely. We have to acknowledge it, that this is the way people do things here, that you know people want to come to the airport, they want to be with their family when they say goodbye. You know, A lot of people here in India are traveling for the first time. Uh, it's a modernizing country. This is a new thing for people. Unable to expand beyond the existing airport's 1,800-acre footprint, architects expanded up designing a revolutionary membrane roof 190 feet above the ground. 
that creates a cathedral-like 45,000 square foot departure space by using an incredible support structure. If you think about it, an airport terminal is really just a gigantic roof under which you have arrivals and check-in and security. The question is, how do you hold it up? Well, a typical solution is just to use columns, big vertical elements that take up this massive horizontal load. But the architects of this terminal wanted you to walk in and just be blown away by the massive openness. So to create that, they removed 50% of the columns. Problem is, how do you then hold up the roof? To do it, they invented something called a pod. Built on top of each mega column, these pods are 55 foot tall steel support structures that stretch out laterally to create 24 individual arches. Now by linking all 30 mega columns into one interconnected steel frame, loads can be transferred out and then down through the columns, allowing engineers to hold up the entire 15,000 ton roof without compromising open space for the passengers below. So the columns are coming out, in some cases, 100 feet unsupported like gigantic flagpoles, which would otherwise almost want to kind of move in the wind. And this enormous pod steel structure is tying the entire thing together. That's right. It's a, it's a uniform structure, acts as a kind of mega truss all together. So you can't have one part acting without the other part. It all acts in unison. So when I look up at this pod or that pod or that pod, the reality is they really are tied together like one enormous frame. One system. Each pod is a massive 275 ton structure, 14 times heavier than the maximum capacity of a tower crane. So crews build each one by lifting 20 smaller steel sections to the top of the highway truss where they assemble them individually before moving the entire pod onto the mega column. Right now they're prepping one of the longest sections, the perimeter truss. So, Oni, this right here, this is the bridge to the perimeter truss. So we're going to lift this piece by the crane, take it up. That's going to go right there, connecting those two wing trusses, right? Yeah. It has come in two pieces. These two pieces are welded and made into a single piece. It is getting assembled here, and it is lifted by the crane, and again assembled at the top. All right. Me and my squad are ready to go. We've got tension on the line. The crane's going to pick up this amazing, enormous perimeter truss. We'll keep it level, and then we're going to send it over 100 feet in the air to the top of that pod. All right, boys, here we go. At over 60 feet long, the perimeter truss forms just one side of the pod, making for an unwieldy lift that's controlled using tag lines on either side. Give me some tension, come on now, give me some tension. The bridge truss is starting its flight in the air, which means you and me must begin our flight on foot to get up there. How do we get there? We'll go there, come on, lead the way. Yeah. I love this man. I love this man. Hard to control on the ground, 100 feet up, crews position this perimeter truss from the very edge of the pod. See those little dudes hanging out right there on the edge of the steel? That's, uh, that's where I'm going. Hello, boys! Oh, God. There it is. I'm going out there, when I'm doing it. Cantilevered 60 feet out from the edge of the highway truss, means maneuvering on a beam just eight inches wide. Made even harder by the five support braces blocking our access. It's from this flange on which I'm standing that we're gonna connect the bridge truss. So it's this piece here and these holes in the plate that we have to bring down and line up. The issue is when this thing comes down, if it slides forward, it is gonna crush me. So I gotta be able to move quickly if, if it does move. It takes a team of eight iron workers located at each of the four corners to pull the 13-foot-tall piece of steel into position. So the guys above my head are tightening up their bolts. We're about to lock up our bolts. Once this side is good and tight, we're going to swing the piece in and lock up the far corner. Using five steel guide plates mounted to the truss, the team lines up 16 bolt holes on each corner. Right now, one plate is off by a fraction of an inch. All right, so Razag, uh, despite his somewhat modest size, is going to use all of his oomph to physically push the piece over. And as it swings, I'm going to stab the holes and ideally nail it just as it passes over. But Razag, you can do this. You can do this. Come on, baby. OK, 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 OK. No, a little more, a little more. One more, one more, one more, one more, one more. No, one more. Come on, come on. Come on. There, no, I need more, I need more. 
I need more. Ah, oh, yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay. I got it. Woo! I got it. Uni! You enjoy it, no? I'm loving it, Uni. Loving it. The plates are now lined up. I can see straight through this hole. It's now time for some bolting. The perimeter truss is secured with nearly 200 individual bolts. When all 30 pods are completed in four months, they will have aligned over 10,000 bolts. Once all four perimeter trusses are bolted in place, then the pod is ready. Then all 275 tons of it are gonna literally slide over top of the building to its final location atop the mega column. Coming up, erecting a six-lane highway over one of the densest parts of this city. You gotta be kidding me, we're not crossing this road. Means driving a flatbed truck through insane traffic. Oh, oh! In just two years, Mumbai is expecting over 36,000 more annual flights to arrive. While the new airport is attempting to handle this spike in air traffic, the car traffic arriving at the airport is an even bigger problem because outdated roads just can't handle the three and a half million cars that clog Mumbai streets every day. The Chhatrapati Shivaji International Terminal is the only international airport not connected by a major highway. So if you want to take a flight out of this airport, the only road you can take is this one right here. And as you can see, it can take hours. On this narrow two and a half mile stretch, traffic rarely tops five miles an hour, cutting directly through a neighborhood where more than 90,000 families live. So, Darmaner, you're sitting in traffic, there's rickshaws everywhere, it's honking, it's going crazy. Does it just drive you mad? We go so crazy, so furious. We are not moving bloody inch in the last 15 minutes. In Mumbai, it's very difficult to put your vehicle in third gear. You're always in first and first second and gear. Second, that's it. That has to be, I can agree, one of the single most frustrating and anxiety-provoking feelings is fearing you're gonna miss the plane. And you can't do anything on it. You can do nothing. You are powerless in the face of you traffic. You can't do anything on that. Right. With no room to divert traffic or widen the existing road, engineers designed a massive six-lane superhighway perched 40 feet above the city. This elevated highway connects with a main artery to the west. Stretching over two miles, cars will be able to drive to the airport in just 20 minutes. The biggest challenge facing 20 workers building the entire highway without closing a single road below. So this stretch is running right to the heart of the city. Yes. And you cannot stop the traffic from getting to the airport. I cannot stop it because if I stop the road, no passengers can fly from this terminal. So you have slums, you have apartment buildings, you have the existing traffic you have to keep going directly to the terminal. Yes. Two sets of vertical columns support most elevated highways, each 50 feet apart on either side of the span. But more columns means less space for the road below. At Mumbai's new airport, engineers are suspending the entire 90-foot-wide highway from a single row of arching columns. By widening the top of each column by 12 feet, they cantilever two 30-foot-long sections of road deck, creating six floating lanes to the airport without obstructing roads or neighborhoods below. Crews fabricate the over 12,000 pieces of road deck. Okay, there we go. In a storage yard over a mile away. They then transport each piece to the location on flatbed truck. Easily one of the most harrowing parts of the job. All right, now give you a sense of just how complicated this job is. We're not building this highway out in a field somewhere. We're going to get this piece into location by going right through dense Mumbai traffic. Right, Ali, let's do this. Yeah, I know you know. It's not about the words, baby. It's about the feelings. All right, we're going in. With the concrete in tow. you got to be kidding me. We're not crossing this road. You've got... Look at this. This is like playing a game of Frogger. I mean, you read it on paper that Mumbai is the densest city in the world, that there are 20 million people living here, but you don't really get it until you try and actually cross the highway in a flatbed with a piece of concrete behind you. Oh! Oh! Oh, my God! Look at this. Wahid Ali, I'm not gonna lie, I thought you were gonna clip that ripshot. 
After crossing five lanes of traffic, Wahid Ali now contends with one of the city's busiest roads. This is incredible. I mean, there are slums right over there. There are dense apartment buildings. There are cars everywhere, rickshaws and people. Wahid Ali, are you stressed? Are you okay? What's happening? The crew not only contends with the roads, but also a cramped work site, where they have just 2,000 square feet of space to position this section for the lift. From the left, yeah, keep cutting it. This is nasty parallel parking, by the way. Look at this. Whew. Wahid Ali! Very impressive. Very, very impressive. I want to tell you right now, I would challenge any American cab driver to come here, take this piece of concrete, and navigate it through what this man just did. Good stuff. Give me a hug. Not going to happen, but we did it. We're here. We're ready to install it. Should we go? So the next step is to attach a strand jack, this lifting mechanism, to the piece in order to get it from down here up top. Using two inch diameter steel bolts, we secure the piece to the strand jack to send it up 40 feet. Get that in there. This lift has to happen quickly because right now, this 25 ton piece of road deck is just 10 feet from someone's home. Danny, it's going up. Are you kidding me? You're lifting me. Wait, we're lifting right now? Yeah, it is start lifting, started lifting. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Everyone's laughing now. Do you want to keep going? Yeah. Okay, so um, cargo rule safety uh, before the lift begins, get off the piece that which is being lifted. We didn't do that, so I'm actually standing on the 25 ton segment. The strand jack has taken the load, and as you can see, we're floating. Already that they got it. A little bit sketchy. I guess it's, uh, that's a first for me. I come to India for new cultural experiences, and this is a new construction experience. I'm surfing, except instead of a surfboard, it's a 25 ton piece of road deck. The lift takes less than an hour. The installation will take another three hours. And by nightfall, this highway will have grown by an additional 10 feet. I have to say, for years it's been a dream of mine to actually have the opportunity to ride a piece up during a lift, and for years I've been thwarted. But right now, in Mumbai, I'm doing it. Standing on a 25-ton piece of concrete with a highway to my right and an apartment building directly behind me. This is heavy construction in the heart of Mumbai. Coming up, a 275-ton pod moves the length of a football field. One more. Okay. One more. Without the use of a single crane. Come on, baby. Give it to us. The Gateway of India is located in South Mumbai. Completed in 1924, the British built this monument as the entrance to their colony. Over 60 years after India's independence, Mumbai is building a new point of entry, the brand new Chhatrapati Shivaji International Airport. A building like this does become a kind of a gateway or kind of a front door to a city or a country. Absolutely. I think these kinds of facilities somehow showcase India to the world. So we want people to remember India when they leave and of course keep in mind Mumbai when they arrive. The defining feature of this new gateway the 17-acre membrane roof will be held up by 30 perfectly positioned pods sitting atop each mega column and topped by 244 massive skylights, making this the most innovative roof in India. Without using a single crane, crews are preparing to move the eighth fully assembled pod 300 feet along the highway truss, a milestone one month in the making. So essentially the highway truss system lets you theoretically take one of these pods and move it anywhere in the X or Y axis. I can't afford to have a crane using up a lot of space at site for the erection of a pod. So the best way was I build a highway truss on top, I assemble the pod at one location and transport it to its required location without affecting the pod below. So while this pod is traveling over the site, below where we're standing, work continues. Yes. Each pod sits on top of an eight-sided steel disc called a boggy. Using two hydraulic pistons that act like arms, the boggy grabs onto rails that run atop the highway truss, pulling both itself and the pod forward. But with only a narrow 36-foot base, the trick is keeping the 100-foot-wide pod in balance. In the most simplest terms, I have a tray and a glass filled to the brim and I'm supposed to take it right to the customer. 
And during that pass, no, not a drop falls down. Cannot spill the water. Weighing more than a jumbo jet, as the pod moves along the highway truss, crews adjust 20 jacks located underneath the body to keep this 275-ton structure from toppling over. Now, has this been done before? No, this is the first time that such a system is employed. In India, for sure. This has not been done in India? No. The longest pod move yet requires not only 12 workers, but, per Indian tradition, the blessing of a Hindu god. So here on an Indian construction site, before any significant works begin, they have a ritual called a puja. And here is where they're asking the gods essentially to make sure everything goes perfectly. And part of the puja is to offer three things. A coconut for pure milk, flowers, and some sweet offerings. You can see that right here, literally sitting atop the pod. With the blessing ceremony now complete, the crew prepares to move the boggy. Each piston extends out five feet, pulling with over 30 tons of force. You know, from here, you can really understand exactly how this pod is traveling. Out in front, there are these two hydraulic pistons. They extend out, grab onto the highway truss, and then pull the pod forward. Each stroke takes four minutes, moving the pod just five feet forward. Crews repeat the process 75 times over the next four hours before reaching the final location. We're nearing our now fifth hour of jacking this piece. We're not gonna leave her till we're done. And by night 10, we will have this thing over top of Mega Column. Mr. Muti, yeah. are we here? Yeah, we're almost Muti. Is the Mega Column underneath us right now? Yeah. Exactly. That's it right there? Yes, right here. One more. One more. Woo. We have been here all day and practically all night. This is the last and final stroke to get this pot in position, and we are done. Come on, baby, give it to us. The pod has traveled over the building to its final destination. Right. Self-standing at the end of the day. Self-standing. There you go. Mega column standing on its own, now capped with this amazing structural column, which ultimately will hold up this incredible roof. Congratulations, really. Thank you. It's an amazing night. Right. Five hours later, the pod is home. These pods will soon become the linchpins of one of the most innovative airports ever built, accommodating 45 million annual passengers and bringing 750 flights here each day laying the infrastructure for a modernizing city that will change the face of India. Tell me about the, the vision for this terminal. We hope that this project will become a catalyst for change, that with all the challenges and difficulties and constraints that we had, similar to the rest of Mumbai, how we were able to deliver something which is truly world-class, something which is really unique and fantastic, that will give them hope right. that even the rest of Mumbai has the potential to become a world-class city. You know, airports are really amazing building types. On the one hand, they're gigantic pieces of infrastructure, basically a parking lot for airplanes. But on the other hand, in this globalized world, they can also represent front doors to cities and really gateways to entire nations. And without question, the Chhatrapati Shivaji International Airport will be the bedrock of Mumbai's future. And if you come to Mumbai and first walk into this amazing arrivals hall, you'll be impressed by its size and its density, but you'll also be immediately aware that you are in India.